Corbin and welcome back to a brand new video. It's been about two weeks since I released the app and we actually have four subscriptions already. We haven't really done any marketing. We started an Instagram page as you may have seen, but we haven't really done any paid ads or anything like that. So I think it's pretty decent for an app with no marketing at all. But before we make like the big announcement, etc., before we really do the hard release, we have some updates to make and that's what this video is going to be about. So let's head over to our gyro board and check what updates we need to make on the app. Okay, so I kind of split this into two different sprints or we first we have this version two of the app which is going to be like a little bit of a bigger update like the 1.2 kind of thing whereas this first update is just going to be the 1.10 or 1.01 whatever then we have this other one that I call project toolkit so uh, yeah a couple of different sprints that we have here we're going to start off with this one which is going to be the first update there's just some basic bug fixes of some stuff that I found for example I think we can speed the app up a little bit by making all list use list builders as stated in this ticket uh, we also want to add some more uh, text fillers to the gear because right now it's not really formatted in the same way as when you have on your job page for example. Let's get to work. So the first thing which I did was I implemented list view builders in all of the places which I previously had list views in Flutter. Let's take a little bit of a closer look at this. So a list view is a basic widget that renders all of the items at once which can lead to poor performance if you have large lists which we will have in this app. On the other hand the list view builder is a more advanced widget that only renders the items that are currently visible on the screen improving the performance of the app meaning that they will only become built once you scroll them into view which is very helpful when we're going to have hundreds and hundreds of jobs and it's going to save data and it also make the performance better for the user. In addition to better performance, the list view builder can also allow you to build more dynamic lists that can change based on the user input and data. So this will allow us to do much more advanced things in the future. So we can easily add or remove items and filter, for example. And this also allowed me to only show 10 items on the first page of the app, for example. Another advantage is that it's easier to customize the list. So for example, in a list view, you're limited to a single item layout for all of the items. But in a list view builder, you can easily create different layouts for the different items. So all in all, I think this will be an improvement for the app and it probably took me an hour to do all of this so it wasn't too bad and an hour definitely worth investing. After this I moved on to making some pretty basic code changes so that now on iOS it will show you a native iOS date picker for example and on Android it will show you a native Android picker meaning that it's a much smoother experience and also it should be significantly less laggy on Android because for some reason Android does have some issues sometimes handling iOS widgets. Okay so we made some progress now this took much longer than I thought it would but oh well what we've done is that we've changed it so now that when you're on iPhone and you press one of these start time for example you only change the time on the start time makes it a little bit clearer where you meant to change the time and then the end time same there and then the, the start time is the standard date picker so yeah that's how it works on iPhone and, and this is going to be applicable for all of the different places where you pick a date in the app and the way that I'm doing this is that in this uh, part of the app that's called database service I have a update job I have this update job start date function and now I've started using this package that's called show platform date picker and essentially what this is is just a simple flutter package where that's called flutter platform widgets where you can implement this and it will depending on if you're Android or on iOS it will show you the proper one so I've implemented this for all of the date instances, so now it all looks native on iPhone whenever you're picking a date or you're picking a time, but it also looks native on Android. So you saw how it looks like on iPhone there, let me show you quickly what it looks like on Android. So now on Android, when changing the date, you get the standard Android date picker, same if you change the time, you get the standard uh, material, which is what Google calls their Cupertino equivalent, uh, date picker. So that's really nice, really nice feature. So we are going to head over to... Uh, gyro and we're gonna change the status of that to done whoops now I just moved the whole board we're gonna change the status of that to done and we'll also comment out the code kind of I think instead I'm gonna take this as a go if I struggle to understand something and understand it then I'll add a piece of comment to that code because it's gonna be so time consuming to go through all the code and commenting it out and I think now looking back at it, it was pretty clear what it does like I think it's structured in quite a decent way so now we're gonna add some gear text fillers maybe we'll get to that tomorrow as well so that's the next plan for the next part of the development so I finished this part made the app all nice and stuff and then it was time to upload it to the app store this kind of process is kind of simple these days it used to be relatively difficult for me but now that I've done it so many times it becomes super easy so all you do is you open it in Xcode you pick some signing teams it's called basically it's just saying who owns whatever feature that you're deploying in the app 
and for me it just happens to be my company so I add all those things in Xcode. After that we do the exact same thing in Android pretty much and then we head over to ChatGPT to get some help from it and then after that we're gonna upload the app to uh, App Store. What then happens is that Apple will approve this app and it will then uh, upload it to the test flight part where you can test it a little bit prior to releasing. Uh, this is always good to do because sometimes once you've been developing stuff you can have changed some packages or stuff like that so you'll need to check that it still works on your real device and not just on your emulator and same thing goes for Android. So I create both of these packages in both Xcode and also as well for the Android package I upload that to the respective stores and then it will be on there. So that was pretty much it for this video. It was a pretty quick update video, pretty mundane boring one I guess but I'm just documenting this process as you know. I promise I'll make some more entertaining videos in the future to come. If you want to follow this series and see how this app develops, I promise to share all of the marketing and stuff that I do for the app. Then feel free to subscribe down below, hit the notification bell so you're notified when these videos come up. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.